Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Sunday, April 15th, 2018, and I want to talk to you this evening about the all-iron battery. For those of you who are new here, forgive the strange location. I'm between projects right now and just want to give you a quick update. The all-iron battery is a project in which we use an iron metal anode and an iron salt cathode, so iron 3 something. Uh, at the cathode to accept electrons and the hope is this will be an extremely cheap DIY friendly type of battery that people could assemble an experiment with or eventually might be scaled up to use as a grid scale battery. Iron is a nice material to use for a massive scale battery because iron is one of the most produced materials in the world and we just just humans produce an amazing quantity of iron. So good thing to start with. The cell in design looks like this and the most familiar form that I've talked about a few times has been the iron EDTA cell. So on the left side you have iron going to iron 2 plus and there's iron EDTA there just so that there's a balance of the two solutions on either side of the separator. But the EDTA is saturated so iron goes to iron 2 plus and then iron hydroxide or iron oxide hydroxide. That liberates electrons, which then travel around to reduce iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus. This is what the cell looks like right now. This is definitely not the most effective or efficient cell. It's just a way to set up a very visible cell so that we can test a whole bunch of them in very comparable conditions without having to worry about cell to cell variation. We use the same salt bridge, we use the same size beakers, we use everything identical as much as we can, and thus we can make some comparisons. Chronoampurometry looks like this on the right side. You can see it, it's a little odd. Bottom line, the iron anode rusts, and that may not be a good thing. Probably that is, is contributing to higher resistance that than needs to be there and less reproducibility than we'd like. That doesn't look like iron hydroxide to me. It looks like pure iron oxide. Iron hydroxide is usually more of a greenish color. That just looks like rust. And as you can see, the cell charge is going up and up and up. More electrons are being used to charge than we're actually getting back out during discharge. It's about 50% coulombic efficiency, which is definitely less than ideal. However, the capacity upon full discharge was 16 coulombs. As we can see, that's going to be pretty good. Next, we tried the fructose cell. You can see that those charge and discharge lines look far more clean. And the iron wire at the end was not bright orange. It looks fairly gray green. And when I rinsed it, I actually got a green precipitate in my beaker. That suggests we are making iron hydroxide, which is good. That's a, that's a more conventional um, oxidized form of iron that is used in batteries, unlike rust, which is not. So again, um, you get this sawtooth slowly climbing, indicating we're not getting all the coulombs out that we put in, but it's still better. It's more like 80% instead of 50%, but the capacity is only about 4 coulombs fructose is not ideal and the open cell potential is much lower almost almost half finally sucrose you get a similar sort of charge discharge profile reasonably clean cleaner than edta but not as clean as fructose and the overall charge is weird so instead of drifting up which would indicate we're getting less out than we put in it's drifting down, which means we're getting more coulombs out than we're putting in, which is just suggests that we're not charging as much as we're discharging. Essentially, the, the cell is on net discharge over the course of, of this 24-hour run. That's not terribly surprising. It just means that we haven't used a high enough voltage during charging in order to, to effectively charge this cell. So there's no obvious winner. Sucrose wins on voltage, fructose wins on coulombic efficiency, and EDTA wins on capacity. Now, if the sucrose coulombic efficiency turns out to be very high as we get the conditions right, then it may end up being better than the EDTA, especially if we can find a good way to increase that capacity, uh, maybe by having more surface area on that electrode in the sucrose solution. So I hope you found that interesting. This week we're going to try a cyanide complex of iron and maybe something else we can come up with uh, as, as we have time. Uh, special thanks to Nico and Ricardo who built the solutions and electrodes for this. Keep watching. Keep tuned in. We're going to update every week on progress on the all-iron battery. And very shortly we're going to have a, a protocol 
if folks want to build one themselves. Until then, this has been Peter Allen in the Allen Lab.